Hi guys, welcome to this session on a Microsoft Project. In this module, I want to have a look at the timeline and what you can do with the timeline. So first of all, I have a project plan on the screen, but no timeline showing. To activate the timeline, you need to be on the View tab and tick Timeline. And then you'll see it and you can expand this area to show more of the timeline or less of the timeline. Now, if you don't want to do it through there, if I tick that off again, you've also got the timeline as a view. So if I scroll down this left hand side, you can actually get into the timeline in isolation. So this is the timeline. So once you're in timeline, you have this format tab active and on the left hand side, you've got font features, different font styles, date range, a date format, etc., etc. So what I'm going to do first off is this is the main timeline. I'm going to give it a label. So bar label, I'll call it main and click OK to that. There's the name. And then what I want to do is add a second bar like so. Now, obviously, I don't want it completely duplicate to the first bar. So I need to change the date range for that second one. And let's say we'll have it on the 25th of January to the 5th of Feb. And you can see how that works. Now, I've done that the wrong way around because that's gone onto the main. I need the second one to have that date range. So do that again. 25th to the 5th. OK. And then that second one, I need to label that as, say, for example, phase one or two or whatever. I'm just making these up. Now, there's no tasks on anything here at the minute. So what you have to do now is click on this option existing tasks so whichever timeline you've got active so this bottom one i've got active i'm going to tick that task and it sits right in the middle if i go to this one and uh, existing tasks let's tick that one and that sits over there now this color blue is not great so if i just change that to a mustard color stands out a little bit better if you don't like it sitting like that, you can either use these tools up here or right click on it and get it to display as a call out and it'll sit up like so. I think I'll do that with both of them. Display as a call out like that. So I've changed the. If you want to change the font, so let's change the font to red. So the font changes red. Red, if you click the timeline. Let's change the font to a different color, green, like so. Now, coming along, you've got those features there like I showed you. Now, if you insert one of these, you are actually creating a new task. If I click on that one, this is wanting you to create a new task on the Gantt chart. So don't do that unless you're starting from scratch and you just populate in a timeline like um, this one. If I go back to the Gantt chart, that would have created a task there. So be careful with that one. I'll just come back in and actually do that. Actually, I'll, give, I'll do exactly that. I'll, I'll um, create a task. Just call it test. OK. So test is gone in on today. If we go to the Gantt chart, there's test. So I don't want that there. So be careful with that. What you're doing, if you're doing this properly, is you are inserting tasks, milestones usually, onto your timeline. You don't want to fill this up with loads of stuff. Um, but I will add another task on this one so it gets more than one thing. Um, I'll put these two on. Let's see what happens when I do this. Yeah, so again, I'll get them to display as callouts. Like so. So... And then these need to change color so they're the same as everything else. Red. So you could have the tasks on one red. And then these are green. The actual labels are green. Now you can't change the color of a task of a bar without affecting the other bar. So let's change that color. So they both change. Just do one, do one. That is not great. Now if I go back to my Gantt chart. So that's the timeline done. 
that's all I want to show. If I go back to the, the Gantt chart and then view and activate the timeline on the Gantt chart, so you now get it on the top of the timeline. If I then go to reports, I've got a custom report, Steve one, where you can see the, the timeline with a report and if that's too big, you can just push that up a little bit. You just want that bit on maybe. So you're starting to get um, a lot of information on one screen. So that's split using the split screen feature. If I just go back to the Gantt chart, I can bring that down again. Now me personally, I don't actually have this usually displayed when I'm in Gantt chart mode because it's taking up too much space. But if you've got a, a monitor connected up, a large monitor, that would probably be okay. Now you can also, if I go back to the format tab, you can also um, click into the timeline first, format. You can also send this to PowerPoint or email. So presentation, when I click that, nothing happens except it's taking a copy of it into the clipboard. Now if I go into a PowerPoint and just paste that, you can see it comes in there ungrouped. So if I'm not, I'm just going to click off it in a second, but basically what that means is that you would be able to animate this if you could be bothered doing all the different labels and everything. But if I just click off that, you can see the timeline. And if I put it into full screen, you can see what that looks like. So these are a bit cluttered. So you might need to uh, move some of these around. But what I want to just do is show you that you can animate that. So I'll just get it to fly in like so, and then get that to fly in like so. And then if you wanted the labels to fly in, you'd have to do that. So now if I put that into full screen, when I click my mouse, that one comes in, click again, that one comes in, press escape, you're back to that, back into project and then remove the timeline if you don't want it. So view timeline off. Now go back down to it on the left hand side. So I've got the full thing there. Now you can move these around. So if for example, this was getting a bit cluttered, you see it's trying to jump onto the second timeline. You could move them around and then copy them into PowerPoint bring that one down as far as you want. So basically that's um, how to use a timeline and I hope you've enjoyed that and I'll see you in the next one.